Alright, shalom you guys. We're here today on another Sabbath. Sorry we took a two week hiatus because daddy was in town and so we took the time to just spend with him. Plus he won't let us do anything because he wants all of our attention, right? Yeah. I didn't I didn't get any work done two weeks this year. But we have fun. We miss him. Shout out to Teacher Simon. Miss you. My love. Since you like her so much, here she is being crazy. All this attitude. I am strong. Where is me? <laughs> it's a book for girls. Alright, so again, this is I Am Daughter of Sarah by uh, Sister Rebecca. And then we've got um, The Magenta Dahlia. And this is by Sister uh, Nista Parach. Um, and this is a coloring and activity book. So in here, can you please stop acting goofy? Here you've got all kinds of um, it's a story and actually has pictures and games that go along with the story. So you guys can get this one off of Amazon. Um, Sister Rebecca's book you guys can get on um, 767 something. I don't know. Uh, the link that's in this description for Amira's book you can also that website is also um, um, is also um, where you can get Rebecca's book. So that link is for Amira's book that we're going to read today. And um, your baby's on the cover. Here is uh, Amira, sister Amira, the book we're going to read today. Here is her daughter. She wants me to show you her daughter, although her daughter's here. And here, she just she just trying to show out because she got her baby in the book a couple times. She'd be like, my baby's on the cover. And I'm like, so? I don't care. I'll cut the cover off. I'll glue my daughter's picture on the cover and then what then what you gonna say? Shit, you know. Alright, so um here's my book, uh The Three Little Hebrew Boys and the Big Bad Wolf by Sister Couture Renee. And this is a book that follows um Shavrak, Meshach, and Abednego on their journey with the classic fable twist of the Big Bad Wolf. There is no swine in this book. This book is kosher, alright? Don't be afraid to buy this book. Right. Not on Sabbath, but don't buy the book on Sabbath. Alright, and finally, to our last book. Do, 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 the star of the day. Yaloni and the Matana by Sister Dula Amir. Everybody give a round of applause. Round of applause. Slap the flag. I can't get the flag. Pat on the back. 
actually a really cute book. It has had a premise, and she um, it's actually a series. So I fortunately have heard the other books, and they're actually all really, really cute. So Yaloni, as she goes through her day-to-day -day operations, we get to follow her and learn about the lessons that she's learning about how to be a child of the Most High, just like you were learning how to be a child of the Most High. Shalom, Sister Courtney. Um, this one can be bought at the link that's listed. This one can also be bought at the link that's listed. Um, this one, I accept Cash App, PayPal, and eBay. And this one is on Amazon. So I will, when I'm done, I will put the links to these two books. Because you don't have this. All right, moving right along. So today we are talking about gratitude. Kim Mari, since you're the only person who's joining us today, sit up please, stop cutting up. Can you tell me what gratitude is? And speak loud, because the fan is on. Oh, we're gonna cut the fan off. And that would suck. For everyone. Stop it, or I can exclude you. I don't know. I'll go get Nama. You don't, okay, so you don't know what gratitude is. Okay, all right. Do you know what being grateful is? To be grateful. Yeah. Okay, so gratitude and grateful are the same thing. So what does it mean to be grateful? To be happy when you get something. Be happy when you get something. Good definition. Do you think you're grateful? Sometimes. Sometimes. And why do you say sometimes? Louder. Because I can't always be perfect. Sometimes you mess up and you're not grateful. And can you can you tell me how you how do you know that when you are being grateful and how do you know when you're not being grateful? Louder and speak clearly. I I asked for something else after I just got something. Isn't that like what happened the other day? Like we got a box with all kinds of like candy, um, and um all kinds of snacks and then like 10 minutes after we open our box that daddy sent us with all kinds of snacks and stuff you're like can I go to the store and buy something can I go to the store and buy me something and I'm like bruh we got 900 snacks in the house I buy a million boxes of cereal. I earned two dollars what do boys do with two dollars he earned two dollars from sleeping the veranda and it's burning a hole in the pocket y'all it, it, it burned a hole all the way to China he's itching to spend them two dollars so anyways okay so yes that's the good example how you know we're not being grateful what are you grateful for my life, you're grateful for your life. Burnell says gratitude is good. Okay, you're grateful for your life. Really good. what else Burnell what are you grateful for sister ya ya chava or is that how you say it um what are your children ask them ask your children what they're grateful for so, okay. So, the Bible tells us to be grateful for all things. Did you know that? Yeah? How did you know that? Because <laughs> I told you. Well, that's true. Okay. So, oh, you need to go get your Bible. Go. Hurry. Vamanos. Oh. Vamanos. <laughs> She's using Spanish words against me today. <laughs> We're going to play a theme song while we wait for Kamara to get his Bible. We're going to go, oh, I'll just read this one. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of Yah in Yeshua HaMashiach concerning you. So in everything that we do, we need to give thanks. Do I need to give thanks when I go to the bathroom? Yes. Yes and no. You probably don't need to give thanks when you go to the bathroom, but you should be grateful for the fact that you can't go to the bathroom. Because there are some people who can't go to the bathroom. And they themselves. die. Well, yes, technically they would die. Like, there's some people who have clogged bowels. And so when they have clogged bowels, they get really sick. And they, if they didn't get taken care of, they die. But there are some people who have something called a colostomy bag. So something's wrong with their bowel tract. And so they can't go to the bathroom. So they have a bag that sits on the outside of their body. And it collects their poop and their pee. It's kind of not really cool, right? Yeah, so it did really cut it no, when they have to empty it and they gotta clean it and it's not really the funnest thing to have. So that's called a plastic bag. 
it probably is painful because they have to put like a hole in their side. So then it, it's kind of like you need to be grateful for the fact that like we don't think about those things and that's that's the kind of things that um, we need to put more thought into like the small things in life that we overlook like our breath right we breathe in and out all day long but we don't really think about the fact that there are people who can't breathe and if you can't breathe what happens you die immediately you die right so the fact that we have breath in our body is a thing that we should be grateful for because without it we would die right but we overlook those things we're not necessarily always grateful for so hold on i say something uh having life that yahua has given me and my mom so that's what Bernal said that he's grateful for good answer Bernal. and sister yachava she said my children ran outside after the first lesson i'm watching by myself okay all right that's fine all right so um like I said, so those are things that we should be grateful for everything our breath think about something that you don't really think about that you should be grateful for so we talked about breathing we talked about going to the bathroom what else do you guys think of anything that you should be grateful for that you don't really think about that we should be thinking the most high for what sit back because they're losing it my bible yeah be grateful for your bible because that's true because not always do people have bibles right not everybody has access to read the word for themselves so that's another good one Brunel, do you have an answer for us um another one that i can think of is walking right we walk here and there we walk everywhere and we don't really think about the fact that there are people who can't walk and i'm sure they would love to walk and i'm not talking about mermaids eat. do you like to eat i love to eat there are some people who can't eat right can't drink either. You're they're allergic either. to water. Can you stop? Yes, there are people who are allergic to water. Okay, so moving on. So Ephesians, go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Tell them you're seven so you can get on the bus for free. 
But then it's like, didn't we just hear in church that we're not supposed to lie? But then you're telling me to lie. So when you tell that child to lie for you as the parent, you are instilling in that child that it is okay to lie in general across the board. So you can't come back and be like, you're not supposed to lie. It's like, well, well you tell me to lie. So how are you going to tell me when I can't lie? So, you know, the fact that you have a parent that keeps the commandments, that instills the commandments in you and requires you to keep the commandments. Because what happens when you tell a lie, Mari? What happens when you tell That's spanking. You get a spanking, right? Because the Bible tells us to use the rod of correction, right? And do I do I spank you till I like till you're dead? That's cool. Yeah, I don't spank you. It's not possible, but I don't spank you till you're dead, right? And I spank you because I want you to learn to fear the most high, right? Right. So so some people you, don't even have parents at all. Yeah, and some people don't have parents at all. That's a good point, Kamari, that's right. So there are some people who will never ever get to know the most high. And people who never get to know the most high, where do you think they're gonna go? They're, they're good. Well, it doesn't even matter if they have parents. It just, I mean, the Almighty didn't call them. And that's the point I'm going to get to is that He chose us. We didn't choose the Almighty. He chose us. So I am grateful, right? Things that people don't really think about. I am grateful that the Almighty chose me because He didn't have to choose me. He could have left me out there in the darkness and predestined me for hell, which I don't know where I'm going to go at the end of the day. I pray that I'm going to go to, the, to heaven and, you know, that my works will be righteous and that I will continue in this path of righteousness. But at the end of the day, I don't really know. Nobody knows because there is no one thing. Um, some churches teach once saved, always saved. So they believe once you come to church and you get baptized and you pray your tithes, that you're always saved forever. Like you can't go to hell. And that's not true because... You can be working righteousness today and tomorrow be working wickedness. And then when you get to the kingdom, you're going to be like, Almighty, remember when I fed the homeless? And remember when I paid my tithes? And remember when I cast out spirits? And then Almighty's going to tell you, depart from me, get away from me. I never knew you. Because once you start working uh, wickedness, all your righteousness is gone. And in like manner, when you start working righteousness, when you were wicked, but then you work righteousness, all your wickedness is forgiven. So it's important that we remember to work righteousness from the day we find out, from the day we hear truth, to the day we die, right? So the Almighty chose me, he chose you, right, to give you truth, right? And he loved us before we loved him. So it's not that you didn't wake up and say, you know what, Almighty, I love you. No, the Almighty loved you first. And um, that is in John, John chapter 15, about John, Gospel John, not children came back so we're tuning in all right shalom little peoples john chapter 15 kamari wants to do a dance off so we'll have to find a day to try and figure out how to work that out Mari said you guys need to learn how to have patience. I know a lot of people that don't have to do this Verse 20. I'm sorry, verse 16. You flip like a grandma. <laughs> Shalom, you guys. Give it to, yeah, give it you. So, and it's 
whatsoever you shall ask. So um, he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordain you that ye should go, sorry, that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And then 1 John 4.19 First John, First John four nineteen. Four nineteen. Shh, shh, shh. We love him because he's first love us. Right. So who loved us first? Y'all. So did y'all? Did I love y'all first? No. Did Amira love y'all first? No. Did Burnell love y'all first? No. Did you love y'all first? <laughs> no, he loved us first, no, right? No, because you raised me, so you taught me to love y'all first and first. But he knew you. But he knew love you. He knew you before he before I was even born. Okay, we need to go to the scripture that says he knows every last hair that we had before we knew. Yep, he knows every hair on our body, and that he knows before we were born. Okay, so knowing that the Almighty chose us, and that He sent His Son to preserve our life. So when I say He sent His Son to preserve our life, what does that mean? But yeah, that he sacrificed himself, right? To not only make us feel indebted to serving him, pleasing him by keeping his commandments, right? So we should feel indebted to him by keeping his commandments, and that's going to be John 14. Right? The people that are honest will have an opportunity, most high willing, to come to truth. But here's the thing, is that you look at people in false churches, some people, not a, and probably a lot of people, go to church just to have something to do. Like, they're not really honest. Daddy was in a false church, right? I was in a false church. But when Daddy was in a false church and he was reading things in the Bible, and then he was watching his pastor contradict those things, right? Like, um, we were... We were, when we were in false church, we were Pentecostal, right? And then in the Pentecostal church, they don't keep the day of Pentecost, huh? which is kind of dumb, right? Or they read not to have any, um, not to have any um, idols, right? And no idolatry. But then you have crosses. And so Daddy, because he was honest, started questioning those things. And when his pastor couldn't give him correct answers, couldn't give him biblical answers, then Daddy's like, I have to go look somewhere else. So, what you can do in your free time is you can pray for those people, right? You can say, Almighty, people who are in false churches, who are honest, I pray that you have an opportunity to show them light. You know, so people may, somebody else may see, somebody may see, somebody serving the Almighty, they may ask questions, or somebody serving the Almighty may see somebody not serving the Almighty, and they may offer information. So, the Almighty knows all things, and whoever's supposed to be saved is going to be saved. You don't have to worry about that. So, um, John 14 and 15. John 14 and 15. 14. Verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Right. So if I love the Almighty, am I going to lie? Yes. If you love the Almighty, no, but you're not tempting to lie. Trying, and I try to lie. You're, you're overcomplicating it. Just stop. <laughs> if I love the Almighty, am I going to steal? No. Sit up. If I love the Almighty, am I going to kill? No. If I love the Almighty, am I going to break the Sabbath? Can't be over Kimari, to answer the question. No. Okay, thank you, right? Because if you love me, keep my commandments. Shalom, Angel. The Hebrew one is turning, tuning in. Thank you. 
Um, so anyways, moving on. But it also gives us having the, knowing that the Almighty first loved us, right? Knowing that the Almighty um, sent his son down and that he um, let his son be sacrificed so that we can preserve our life gives us a sense of security. That he is our father, right? He's our, our father that sits in heaven, right? And he will always protect us, just like your dad protects you, right? And when my dad was alive, my dad protected me because that's what good fathers do. Good fathers protect their children. But let's stop and think. How do parents, right? Think You can think about me or you can think about daddy, right? How do parents treat a child that is ungrateful? What happens to you when, what happens to the situation you brought up, right? About how, you know, you get stuff and you want more things, right? So the situation the other day, if you're just tuning in, we got a box that came in and we got a bunch of like candy and cereal and all kinds of stuff in the box, right? Backpacks and clothes and stuff. So then right after we got that box and we opened it and we got to see all the stuff, cool stuff we got, Kamari turns around and is like, hey, can I go to the store and buy something? And was my response favorable? No. Act it out. Show them what I did. You were like, huh? Yeah, I was kind of confused. I'm like, hey, we just got this box, right? What are you talking about? Right? And I just put in two dollars. Yes, he wanted to go spend his two dollars. But how do parents, are parents happy when their children are ungrateful? Can you speak, please? Stop being so goofy. I'm not trying to be goofy. I'm just answer the saying, question. I'm just shaking my head. What if they can't see you shake your head? No. Answer the question. It hurts. What happened? What happens? Are your parents happy when you're ungrateful? No. Right. Because parents work hard. We work hard to protect you. We work hard to provide for you. We work hard to make you happy. And so when you return our hard work with uh, displeasure, right? When you're like, Ugh, I want this. Or, Ugh, I'm not happy. Ugh, I'm bored. When you got a room full of toys, it doesn't make